There's a fascinating story told about King Frederick II, an 18th century king of Prussia. And it goes like this. When when Frederick went out on an inspection tour of a prison, he came to a large cell occupied by a number of inmates. And when they saw the king, they fell to their knees and they all began to beg to be released. And they all claimed to be innocent of the crimes they were charged with committing. And uh, while listening to all of these uh, pleas of innocence, the king caught sight of a man sitting alone over there in the corner, a prisoner seemingly uh, unconcerned with, with all this commotion. And Frederick motioned uh, to him and, and asked him, why are you in here? The man answered, for armed robbery, your majesty. The king asked him, are you guilty of that crime? The man said, yes, I am. I, I deserve my punishment. And at that King Frederick summoned the jailer and said, release this guilty man at once. I don't want him kept in this prison where he's going to corrupt all the innocent people in here with him. And that man was set free. Now, as we sail on our wisdom journey into this next verse here in Romans chapter 6, I, I can't help but think of the parallel truth the apostle Paul is about to deliver. The person who admits his guilt and shame is going to be the prisoner set free from their prison cell of sin. The king has a pardon for him by his grace. Now, uh, so far in our journey, Paul has made a number of contrasts here in Romans chapter 6 between law and grace, between sin and righteousness. And now we come to verse 23, where Paul delivers this final all-encompassing contrast. And this, beloved, is an incredible declaration. Paul writes, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Now, the idea here is that there are penalties for sin now, several kinds of consequences. But at the end of life, Paul says here, there's going to be a final, ultimate, eternal payment. The word Paul uses here for wages is the Greek word opsonion, which typically referred to the daily wages or salary paid to a soldier in the Roman army. Oftentimes, the soldiers back here were, were paid in salt, and, and that served as a very valuable currency of their generation. They could trade that salt in the marketplace for food or other items. And, and even today, we speak of an employee needing to be worth his salt. Well, that's an expression drawn from this ancient practice. The Roman soldier got paid. Well, Paul says the unbeliever is going to be paid as well. And the Word of God tells us that sin brings about this physical death. That's a payment. One day there's going to be a second death. The Bible talks about uh, the second death being an eternal separation from God in the lake of fire. That's Revelation 20 and verse 14. But I want to point out that Paul isn't referring to that final payment, that, that ultimate eternal payment of sin, the second death. He's also referring here to this daily experience of death. Just as a Roman soldier was paid regularly, so the sinner is paid regularly throughout life. How? Well, I, I think of, of what sin does to relationships. I think of what lust does to sexual purity. I think of what greed does to integrity, what materialism does to a spirit of contentment. Today, we see addictions of, of all kinds that destroy people's lives. We see selfishness or laziness destroy opportunities and accomplishments. Let me tell you, beloved, sin is a thief. Sin never gives. It only takes Think about the thievery of sin today. Uh, sin has stolen God from true religion. Sin has stolen the, the supernatural out of Christianity. Sin has stolen authority from the Bible. It has stolen God out of education. It has stolen ethics out of business. Sin has stolen truth out of politics. 
And it goes on and on and on and on. Sin is a thief. And it's going to steal life away from from somebody's existence even today. The wages of sin is a death-like existence. And that means right now. And that isn't all. After an unfulfilled life of chasing sin, the unredeemed are going to be faced with that final payment, that, that final payday, which is eternal death, eternal separation from God. You don't go out of existence, but you go out of the presence of the grace of God forever. This final payday is so terrible that that people today are trying their best to ignore it. You you talk to people of a final judgment in the existence of hell today, well, that's something they don't want to talk about. They'd rather not hear about. And if hell is, is mentioned at all, well, it's going to be a curse word. It's going to be a metaphor for for going through some uncomfortable experience on earth. But let me tell you, hell is not a metaphor. It's a real place. Paul hasn't put a period, by the way, after this reality. So at this point, I think we're ready for some good news. Paul writes here again, the wages of sin is death, but, well, that means that isn't all. The wages of sin is death, but... The free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And let me tell you today, sin will take you to hell. The Savior will take you to heaven. Heaven is a free gift. So how do you get this free gift? Well, because it's a gift, you can't earn it. You don't earn heaven. You earn hell as a payment, a payday, because of of sinning. But you receive heaven as a free gift. In other words, the only place you can work your way into is hell. Paul writes here that heaven is a free gift, and the Greek word he uses for gift is charis. It's translated throughout the New Testament as grace. You could literally translate this phrase here, but the free grace of God is everlasting life. You know, in the New Testament, grace refers to that which we receive, but we do not deserve. The wages of sin is death, and and we deserve that. And unless the Lord returns in our lifetime, we're all going to die. And we're going to die at least once because we've all sinned and we deserve to die. We will die physically. But the believer will not experience that second death, that eternal separation from God in in hell. The believer is going to go straight to heaven when they die. Why? Because they deserve it? No. Because of grace. God's grace toward those who who have admitted they were guilty, sinful, and they trusted in Christ alone. You know, that's why this verse ends with that critical phrase. Notice it again. But the free gift of God is eternal life in or through Christ Jesus, our Lord. I remember reading some time ago of a woman named Jan Davis who was involved in a very dangerous sport called base jumping. And that's parachuting off fixed objects such as cliffs uh, and towers. Along with others, she was jumping off a 3,000 foot high granite cliff in Yosemite National Park there in California. Now, the jumpers all knew base jumping was illegal in this park. In fact, the law was adopted because six people had already died base jumping in this park. Well, this group of jumpers were out there actually protesting that law. Ignoring the warning, they were jumping off that high cliff to prove that the sport was safe. They knew the risks. They also knew the law, and they ignored it. While her husband was filming her jump, he caught it all on tape. Jan jumped off the cliff, but her parachute failed to open properly. She fell for nearly 20 seconds before hitting the rocks below. I couldn't help but think of people today who are ignoring the warning from God. Are you among them? 
If so, you're still falling today, so to speak, if you're alive. You just haven't landed yet on the unwavering, holy justice of God. But there's still time for you. There's still time to experience God's caress, his grace, and this wonderful free gift of eternal life. The Philippian jailer asked Paul and Silas this question, what must I do to be saved? Well, Paul and Silas answered, believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Acts 16, 30 and 31. Let me tell you, beloved, the answer hasn't changed to this day. Now, you can ignore the warning of what's happening and going to happen. You can plead before the king that, well, you're innocent. Everybody else is guilty. But if you disbelieve his word, ignore his warning, you're going to face eternal hell. But here's how you can avoid this this final payday Paul writes about here, this final uh, paycheck for being a sinner. Accept Jesus Christ. Believe the King. Receive him by faith alone, and he will give you, by his grace, the free gift of everlasting life. Well, until we set sail next time, beloved, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen.